Hi everyone, um, this is Shalendu from AppSea Connect, and I also have Mr. David Gervis from ECS, who is also the project manager of process. And uh, we have this webinar on how to optimize SAP parts uh, inventory and make your service contracts profitable. So let me just uh, introduce Dave very briefly. So I and Dave started working together like maybe like five years now, Dave. Yeah, almost, almost 10 years. Almost yeah. 10 years. Probably yeah. first as a customer and now as a partner. So why don't you go ahead, Dave, and introduce yourself to our audience and maybe, you know, take us through the presentation. Sure. Um, so, yes, uh, my name is David Gervis. Actually, Shalindu and I have worked together for uh, approximately 10 years. Um, so I've been working with Apsi Connect over that time. Uh, I work for a company called ECS. ECS was my previous organizations that I worked for as business partner, ERP business partner. So I am working for them. I spent the first uh, or the majority of my time, uh, about 25 years in the medical device industry um, as president of the organization. I spent a great deal of time um, in service and in inventory management which will be what uh, we'll be talking about here in the presentation. So the agenda today is to talk about ECS's process division and the modules. Um, we're going to primarily focus in on service contracts, but there's a lot more to it than that. So we're going to look at managing inventory parts today, uh, service contracts, and handling them in an efficient matter, manner, um, getting the best results, and we'll go through some examples. We're also going to discuss some of the advisory services that ECS provides around these process products um, and beyond. And then once we conclude that, we'll go into a Q&A session. Okay. So we're directing this primarily at, um, at those that run organizations, your your C-suite executives, your managers of both manufacturing and distribution organizations, um, ones that deal um, a lot in service, although it doesn't have to be service because we do cover a lot in inventory as well. But um, we're, today we're going to discuss a lot regarding the uh, optimization of service business and the solutions provided by ECS. So to start, um, talking about service management, um, I've spent the good portion of my career in service, um, a lot uh, fixing and repairing products for customers. Um, and our solution is very, uh, very broad. It does a lot of that and more. So we do a lot of um, solutions regarding servicing products in the field, field service, depot service, um, we do loaner management, we do installations, we do a whole host of things that um, we'll talk about. But revol around all that is the concept of what we're calling the process engine. So the process division, which is a play on words, right? It's process and ECS for, for a very specific reason. We believe very much in having very good process. No matter how good your software is, if you don't have good process, you will not see the end results. So we want to see good planning and analysis. We want to develop good actionable insights into our data. Um, we, we build data cubes for business intelligence. But the idea is that from beginning to end, if you follow good process, you get really good results and you're able to respond very quickly with the software that you have. The software is the tool. So we're just providing the tool and along with our advisory services, the implementation of that tool. So this is kind of the concept. The modules, and this is just a handful of the ones we've developed, but the modules are what I'm calling developed for users by users. By far, the 
vast majority of my time was running business, being in business, managing, servicing clients, and so on. And, you know, my experience has been in the past that the software sometimes hits the mark, but a lot of times doesn't hit the mark because the people that develop it understand the software, but they don't understand the actual user's experience. And, and so we're trying to build things that have the users in mind. So some of these examples are developing preventative maintenance and having a good preventative maintenance program. We have a rebates and chargebacks program, uh, an inventory planning, which I really is, I think is a kind of a game changing way to approach inventory. Um, we have a contracts and renewal, which I felt like was poorly done in the marketplace. I didn't find very much uh, contract renewal software and contract software that was done in the way I would like to see it done that measures profitability and, and has you manage that whole contract process very efficiently. Uh, we're developing field service. Um, we do, we've automated commissions and the ability to voucher those commissions and do and streamline the whole process and uh, depot service. And lastly, um, we've done for all these, we've attached a workflow and approval module. So this is kind of some of the suite of products that we do. We also have loaner capabilities, tracking your loaners, aging your loaners, making sure you're keeping up with those. There's a lot of that, that uh, you know, a lot of loss revolved around not managing your loaner inventory well. So this, this, these are some of the products that we're, we're uh, developing or have developed. So I want to go through a couple of examples. This is real world data. These are companies that I'm currently consulting on. So this is just some of the, uh, the, the leveraging of big data and the results of that big data. But I just let me go through some of the things that we've done. We've we've developed myself and the people at ECS who have been dealing with inventory management for the vast majority of all our careers, a lot of min max systems and so forth. Um, we really got together and said, how can we do this even in a better and more efficient way? You know, the historical inventory planning systems um, were designed, a lot of them are, were designed in the late 60s, early 70s, and we've been following those models for up until current. And so we, we came up with a program, we've redesigned how we do inventory purchasing and so forth. And th these were just some of the results we've gotten in a very short time with some of our clients. So, you know, we've seen inventory levels reduce. Um, in this one case for the customer, about 33%. Um, we also are reducing the amount of POs created and goods received. So the idea of let's be more efficient, create less time creating the POs, less time stocking the inventory, create a rhythm within the organization so that it becomes very steady and predictable. And we're starting to see those costs associated with approaching it that way really drive down. And then, you know, we'd like to see nice, steady inventory purchasing. You know, we know that customers don't just buy in a very steady pattern, but if you, our goal is to try to, to simplify that, to make it steady as possible and to, lower inventory levels in areas that it makes sense to lower them. You know, sometimes some inventory, the strategy may be actually to carry heavier amounts of that inventory, but we're trying to rebalance the inventory load, right? Have the working capital to buy more inventory where necessary or take on other initiatives like what I'm going to talk about next. If you if you get the working capital, you can move into things like developing and, and improving your service system, you know, invest in other areas of your business. So this is this is an example of a service contract customer. This is a service contract customer who that's all they do. This isn't they sell a product and provide service contracts. They they their whole business is service contracts. And I got involved with them a couple of years ago. We, um, they were, the reporting system was saying they were making lots of money on their contracts, yet they weren't making so much money at the end 
you know, when they were looking at their financial statements and they turned to me and said, you know, what's going on? You know, they wanted to implement SAP. And so we went about developing a contract module for them. And what you're looking at on the screen here is just a simple representation of the contract. So this this truly is the green dots are they're making an appropriate profit level. The yellow is they're kind of in the in the low margin area, but the red is where they're losing money. And the way this particular one works is you can see these are the renewal dates. So they haven't even we haven't even gotten to the renewal date as we speak today on January 2023, but you have a number of clients. Now, these aren't just individual contracts for this customer. This is big groupings of contracts for buying groups. So so a couple of those red dots are their actually their largest customers where they they're losing money on a significant portion of their business. They thought they were making money. They're losing money, but by being able to visualize what's going on, seeing the losses, they've actually gone they've adapted, you know, they've made some changes and you know they're they're actually restructuring those contracts so that they are profitable. So the idea here is through our software, the our approach is at the end you get quick available data on your inventory, on your service, and this all the things that we've looked at today you know, while while we're very familiar with some of the new um, visualization software and a lot of the advanced stuff, a lot of the stuff is just simple. Hey, throw it into into Excel. Get um, get your uh, information really quickly and make des decisions really quickly. So um, these are two examples of of the way we've approached both uh, our inventory inventory and our contract management. The last thing, which which it's we can do separately, but really works alongside all our products is the advisory services. So my experience over the last, you know, you know, 25 plus years is that when you buy software, you typically get a training session or you get some implementation and then that's it. You've got the software and you can kind of touch base with them and you struggle to get it implemented many times. Um, well, that's not the approach we're taking. We're, we we built an advisory services division, not just for the, for the products, but, you know, to provide services even outside of the products themselves. But we're we're coupling them together. So when we do sell something, for example, like an inventory, our inventory management system, or the service contract system, we're there to help see it through and get results. So, and we approach it from an executive service. So we'll work with the executives, the C-suite executives, we work with managers, and we, we work with um, the people actually touching the software and implementing it so that from top to bottom, the software and the strategy of getting these things implemented come to fruition. Um, and I like to call something we call our methodology is the power of 1%. So this is this is our philosophy when we take on a project. So the idea here in our methodology is when you bring on one of our products or you consult and take one of our advisory services, we're looking to do things with you that drive real value to your organization. And the 1% is representative. It means how do we get 1% profitability to the bottom line? What would it take to do one more percent? Which sounds small in concept, but anybody running a business, anybody that understands margins and so forth, understand you have to have pretty transformational change to move your bottom line in this way. And this is our approach to all our products. We were very confident when we put something like our inventory system in, our service contract system in, we're gonna move the needle and drive real value to the bottom line. So our, our thought coming in is not, hey, let's improve something or fix this or that. We're really looking to make material changes to your organization. Um, most of us have, you know, it's not just me, I've got a couple other people here with 
you know, decades of experience doing this type of thing. So we're bringing that experience to your organization. We do a lot of phased Im implementations. We're not trying to take on, you know, something just quick and leave. We're, we're trying to implement things that take a little bit of effort and time and have great value. So we do it in a phased way, you know, looking for quick wins so that there's, so that you can see real value for the projects we're taking on, you know, being able to drive your working capital up when you're doing inventory management or get your contracts profitable or, or get a whole contract service um, system going at your company. But in any case, we want to do and get some quick wins um, in the organization. We're very uh, data driven. Uh, we use a lot of business intelligence. So we're not, we're, we like to, we're very familiar with big data and, and analyzing it at a very high level and what it means at a very um, detailed level. And by doing so, we put a lot of measurable and accountable metrics in place. What we'll do with clients in this case is we create visualizations of the data. We look at the impacts we're making are things trending the way we want them to? And when I when I say measurable and accountable, I mean for ECS and the process division. We like to hold ourselves accountable. Um, we like to demonstrate that we're making progress and we're we're, made, we're delivering substantial value to the company. And so that's kind of our approach from top down. Let's do something big. Let's do have metrics to show that it's working and have a process of implementing it over time. So this is this is our approach with the advisory services, and uh, that's kind of the the wrap on the presentation, Shalindu. Um, yeah, Dave, a yeah. few few things that strike me. Um, so uh, we have been working uh, together for a long time now, but just for the benefit of our uh, audience, can you just tell us a little bit more about service and integration management experience that you carry? Sure. Um, so. Like I said, Shalindu, I mean, my my experience um, in both service and inventory management span my entire career. Um, consequently, you know, I understand how critical having a really good service system, service program is for the customer experience and how the inventory side relates to that customer experience. So. I really, you know, have a I have an understanding of those two things, but I also have a history of developing software for both of those. So pr my prior life, I had developed service software and inventory software to do this very thing. It's just that today we're taking the, with the amount of data and the availability of information, we're taking it to the next level. Mm -hmm. So Dave, like what got you into advisory services in the first place? I know that you've been like into uh, the C-level executive of many organizations, but what got you into advisory service in the first place? Uh, good question. So um, like I mentioned, I spent 25 years in the medical device space. Uh, we had sold our company to private equity. And, you know, I just, I just was deciding, I was trying to decide what's next. You know, what am I going to do next? Uh, ECS approached me. They were uh, my prior company's ERP partner, and they were just simply asking me to get involved with some clients on an executive advisory level, but really just on a part-time basis while I was trying to figure out what I was going to do. So I really didn't have any thoughts of product management or anything like that. And so what happened, Lindu, is my first this is my first four assignments with ECS, and this is all coincidence. So because I was willing to advise on all different matters was they all were service organizations and all of them had some type of inventory management needs and a couple of them wanted to uh, implement or improve their service contracts. So uh, it just kind of evolved that way. I mean, I I, I started out slow had uh, was just doing it on a part time basis, but I started to become involved in uh, inventory and service again with these clients. Right. So it, was that the trigger for uh, process? Uh, like how did process evolve? Like how did you get into the product itself? <laughs> yes, it, it, it was the trigger. Um, 
So we, as you saw, we sell, we spell process a little bit of a play on words, right? So it's process with ECS in the middle of it. But the, the reasoning for that is I'm just a big believer in following good process if you want good results, right? So what what happened was, you know, I'm I'm here, I'm looking for solutions for my clients. I was not intending to, to necessarily develop some kind of process product or division with, with uh, ECS. Um, really, I was just looking for service software for my clients. Um, I'm familiar with service software. I've been involved in service, and I wanted to see what was out there. So I, I ended up um, evaluating over time probably about 15 different what I would call gold standard offerings in the market. And when I was doing that, I ran into some immediate concerns. So from my experience, if you're going to have exceptional service, you do need exceptional inventory management. Um, and if you want to turn that service profitable, I found one really fantastic great way is to have good service contracts to make that service profitable. So from my perspective, those gold standard offerings really fell short. So one of the things that, you know, like I said, I love to do in my career was develop some products and implement them. So, it, so out of that evolved this idea of we could really do the development of the products. We could create them in the way we envision them for our customers, for the end users, for the management team, for the executives. And that's what kind of sprung the idea. So it wasn't that we started that direction, it evolved into that direction based on what we saw as a need in the marketplace. Got it. So Dave, like uh, with your experience of implementing process, what are the some of the key reasons why companies lose money on the contract, service contracts? Yeah, no, very good question. Um, what I was, here's what I noticed, and this was just based on my experience with these companies firsthand. I was noticed, I noticed a pattern. The companies I was advising either sold products that they also serviced, or they happened to service other products that others had sold. One thing that I heard constantly was they described their service as a differentiation in the marketplace for their organization. And I, I found that interesting because when you looked at the profitability, they also all knew that they were losing money in service. And to me, you know, the, the, the definition of profit is to provide value in excess of the cost. So here I'm seeing these organizations, they're, they're losing money on their service. And the way that when I asked them, how were they attacking that problem? Um, the answers universally were coming from the cost side of things. How do we trim our cost? How do we be, you know, maybe more efficient, but some of the things that they that were describing to me uh, had the consequence of impacting their service levels. So in a sense, if all you do with your service to try to deal with profitability is, is deal on the cost side only, you end up doing something very counterproductive to your service levels. So, Dave, like, do you mean to say that you need to also address the revenue side of uh, service contracts to drive profitability? Well, I would say in uh, in most cases that I've encountered, yes. You know, service contracts are simply, when you think about it, pre-selling your services, but they require really good management software. Um, I believe it's important to have really good analytics. Alongside with that, you really do need a marketing and sales strategy. Um, but but in, in addition to that, that's not that you ignore the cost side. Cost needs to be addressed strategically. That's why I spent a lot of time focusing on the inventory side. When, we, when I've been working with these service organizations, the very first place we start is inventory. It's the place where you can make the biggest gains. So I, I'll start on the cost side, but move into the revenue to deal with both sides of the equation. Got it. Uh, Dave, I understand that how you price your service contract can definitely impact your uh, profitability and margins. But how does part availability affect, uh, you know, profitability on the service contracts? Yeah, 
Good question. Um, every single one of the gold standard softwares failed in this area, in my opinion. If you want to talk attack the cost side of service, you have to have parts available. So look, you need to fix the customer issue and then move on to the next issue, right? So so customers, now customers don't care if you take their payments on an iPad or if you email them an invoice. You know, you may care. You may care, but they don't care. They want their issue resolved quickly. And I was finding that far too often this was not happening in these organizations. And, and one particular area that was especially not happening was special order parts. Companies were special ordering. Many times they had the parts in stock or should have had the parts in stock. And this had a lot, lot to do with the lack of good inventory management. So of all the quick wins for turning service profitable, inventory management is by far the single most important item. In fact, every assignment that I have taken whether it's been with service or not service at all, just other areas, I've included inventory management. The, it's, it's really a whole topic of working capital, operational savings, what you can do to materially impact the bottom line. Um, but let's just say this, if you sell a product or you service with parts, inventory, in my opinion, should really be your number one strategic objective right now. Okay. So, uh, Dave, just at the overview level, can you um, tell us how does pro uh, pro uh, process uh, account for profitability in the service contract? How does it, you know, bring that visibility? Yeah, yeah, no, yeah, absolutely, and you need to know that. So, what we what we've done in our process division is we've built business intelligent cubes around service, also in other areas as well, and we have analytics. So. As I had mentioned before, we believe in the use and, and consumption of big data to make that determination about profitability and how things are going within the organization. But we also believe in converting that into something very simple and consumable for the executives, managers, and staff. So by leveraging all that data in a meaningful and simple, simple way, you can quickly understand the profitability. So I believe also that it's important to know that profitability at a very macro level. So you wanna be able to know that very quickly, like how am I doing overall, but you also wanna get down to a very detailed level. And so this is what our data cubes allow us to do is look at our service, our profitability, and get down to literally the exact um, service issue if necessary to determine profitability. And when it comes to service contracts, you really want to be able to assess those instantly as well, right? But but what I was finding is most companies, if they were even reviewing it, they may have been reviewing it once a year and they'd sit there and compile all the information and determine how service contracts were doing. But yet here we are in a time where we have increasing costs. You have gas going up, shipping going up, parts going up. Your overall company expenses are just climbing. And so one of the business risks that you do have when you have contracts is you're typically covering for a period of time. Most of the times it's about one year, but you can't turn to your customer mid-year and say, hey, we're going to raise the price or we're going to change the contract. So what was important to my clients was to be able to understand the impact of those costs very quickly, which we did, and develop strategies to combat it. So, you know, if, if service is your differentiator, you need to respond quickly for the customer and also for the health of your organization. Right. So, uh, Dave, like I understand, uh, you know, kind of benefits um, that process can bring about in terms of, you know, um, getting visibility into profitability of service contract. But what are the, some of the other benefits that the customer can expect from process? Well, you, that's correct. We've been talking about service, service contracts, inventory, a good deal today, and their impact on service levels. But our idea is, is to address far more. The philosophy as I, as I mentioned earlier, behind process is deeper. Good process, accurate accounting, quick analytics for decision-making. It's about, once again, products 
for users from users. There's a team of people here at ECS who have real world experience. We understand the complexity of business and the challenge of running a business. In fact, running a business is one of life's greatest challenges. And our team has had to implement long term strategies while addressing the issues of the day. You know, we've all been involved with trying to balance working in the business with working on the business. There is no time to focus typically on a single problem for extended periods of time, especially today. Things move quickly. So our clients and are looking for us to be able to move quickly and implement initiatives with them successfully. So we partner with our clients through products and our advisory services to meet those objectives. So um, Dave, like I understand that uh, the solution itself uh, is sitting on the SAP core, right? So what are some external application that you would typically in integrate process with? Yeah, very good. Good question. Yeah, I mean, we we are um, once again, we are an SAP business one uh, provider um, and we believe in building on top of that code. Um, but but that's you know, the customers are going to need things that extend beyond what you're capable of doing with inside the SAP software or ERP software, right? So we're working on things, for example, that are customer facing or for employees, you know, employee facing. For example, on our roadmap, um, we're about to roll out a really cool field service app that has inventory um, availability all tied into it, you know, really, really well done. And then, you know, we're looking at things like customer portals and so forth. So, you know, we have more on a roadmap, but let me add this, Shalindu, you know, once again, ECS's core competency is SAP Business One, and our strategy is to build upon that foundation. But when we're extending functionality outside of SAP, you know, we've decided we're going to partner with Apti Connect. You know, we we really love your low code approach. Um, we are very security minded, and we know that's very important in the software. Uh, the speed of transmission, and really the number one thing that you have to have is a really good responsive partner. And to that end, um, I'm really optimistic about the future with Apsi Connect and for the benefit of our shared clients. Shalindu, thank you. Thank you so much, Dave, for your time. It was really awesome getting your insight on service contracts and how process can help companies transform that part of business. Um, and I, I, I'm sure that this will really help our audience today. Thank you. Thank you so much, Dave. Okay, have a good Talk one. to you soon. Yeah. Bye. Okay.